Hey all, Pixel here, and I've decided even though it's about mid-March, it's close enough to spring, and I want to get these boring wheels off and get the fun wheels back on. And apparently the universe agrees with me, because it's been a dreary overcast day, and then the minute I started hauling wheels out of the garage, it brightened up and became a beautiful day. So the universe says, let's do it. So in addition to putting back on my spiffy slot mags and my torque thrusts. And if anybody's curious, I eventually want slot mags for the front, but I haven't found a set. So that's why we're running these, because that looks super cool on its own. I've also decided to up the boogie. So it's a set of vintage fender flares from Lifestyle Industries for the rear that I'm going to see if I can put on today, or at least I'm going to see about fitting them up. And then I may decide to paint them the blue, but we're going to work on that. This is the original valence panel with the 90s grill that this originally had on it. That went on this lower section, basically where the turn signal is now. And that came off to put this grill on. But I want to see if I can use it as a front lip temporarily until I build a full custom lip. Because I think it'll work, or at least I think it'll work enough to look cool. I also picked up these super spiffy van mud flaps from heavy hauling i don't know if that's showing up heavy spelled h-e-v-y they do all kinds of interesting van stuff and these they sell this whole thing is white and then they give you paint markers to make it whatever color you want so i did blue to match and eventually when i repaint my van these can be stripped off and redone and then i have a set of vintage fog lamps that i want to put on i don't know if those will work with this but we're going to find out we're going to see how much of this we can get mounted the flares I need to be able to mount in a way that's removable and doesn't leave any residue on the body because when I'm painting I don't want to have that problem. Mud flaps I got to figure out full custom brackets because they didn't come with any brackets or anything so that's going to be a whole thing. And then this is probably going to require a certain degree of cutting up to make it work. But let's get to it. All right, we are back at our base level of boogie. Of course, it occurred to me as I was tightening up the last nut here that I'm probably gonna have to take the rear wheels off to fit up the fender flares and the mud flaps, but oh well. I'm gonna try and see if I can fit that valence up as a front lip. It's still not quite centered and it's just held in by two sheet metal screws, but oh hell yeah! Look at that. That totally looks right. This edge is a little bashed up, just the piece itself is already bashed up, but hell yeah! That looks exactly like I want it to. Um, obviously I'm going to cut all these tabs off the bottom. I'm going to... oops, that was not good because I just scraped too much paint off. And I'm going to have to a little creative about bracing it so it's not just flopping around but yeah as of for now front valence that totally works eventually i want to build a custom one because when i have the smaller bumper on this won't work but as of for now thing that is totally going to work awesome i'm really happy with that so i need to swap out the sheet metal screws for something beefier i may even put some rib nuts in i'm not sure and I need to cut off all those bottom brackets and I need to do a little bit more in terms of finding ways to secure it in place 
but yeah, that's totally gonna work. Now, big question. Now the big question is, is there a place for these? Because I don't really want to block the grill with them. I wanted them to be down here, and I suppose I can mount them ahead of it like that. Because they were originally gonna, there's a bolt back here that's part of the bumper mount that I was gonna make little standoffs so that they would mount to that. But that's gonna be too far back now. But I can figure something. Maybe I'll make a bracket to put some here. Actually, I can turn this this way and I make a 90 degree bracket and I'll just secure them. Maybe something like that. Or do I? If I can make this strong enough, I can mount these straight to there like that, too. That's also an option. But either way, I like that a lot. That really works. Um, so, yeah. All right, I'm going to get back to trying to fit this up in a more permanent way now that I know it works. Check it out. So the two flan I bent two of the flanges over before, put screws in, so those have just been replaced by So let me show you how this is installed. This flange over here I bent down flat and I just drilled a hole and put a bolt in it. And then I bent up all of the lower flanges because I realized cutting them off means not having a mounting location versus bending them up does. The end one's probably still going to get cut off because I don't like how that looks. But then over here, I don't know how well the camera's going to show it, here and here were brackets for holding the battery cable in. I just took the bolts out. They were all rusty, so I put new bolts in. Piece of strip steel that goes down to the bent down flanges, and that holds it pretty good. These are going to need to get painted, but they're holding it for now. It's not perfect. The ends flop a little more than I'd like, but... It's good for now, and if I decide I don't like it, I can add more rackets later. Um, and then these fog lamps, like I said, I was going to try and figure out how to mount them over here. Then I realized there was a hole over here that looked like it had been mounting something else. And the same thing on that side, so no reason not to use them. So those are all mounted up nice and solid. They're going to need to get wired up, obviously. Um, but I have a spare switch on my switch panel specifically for that purpose. I just need to run wires and get a relay. But... If we step back a bit, that looks really nice, I think. I think that really, you know, it's got the valence, it's got the lights. I mean, I think that really works. Eventually, I want to build a custom valence. Or, I keep saying valence. That's a valence. I want to build a custom um, lower spoiler that's a little bit bigger, wraps around the edges some more and whatnot. But as a stopgap until I get around to it, that looks totally cool. And it's already painted a match, that saves me a step. So yeah, I think the front of the van has been up boogied. Now, let's get to work on the back of the van. To work on the back, I bought these fender flares off someone ages ago. They're a set of plastic rear flares, which is good and bad. They're not as strong as the fiberglass ones, but they've got more flex to them, so they'll take a little bit more abuse than the fiberglass ones. Um, I already tested them on briefly, and my imperfect bodywork is not a problem for them. They fit well enough. But basically, what I need to do is, on the inner flange there, I need to put in screws or pop rivets or something. I think I'm leaning towards pop rivets, because those, I can just drill, I can just drill them out later when I need to pull these off to do the repainting. And I think, given the state of these 
think I'm gonna have to scuff them and paint them because they're just a little too beat up to just run them as is. But I definitely like that. They both suit the style. They also fit and they look good over the rear, the fatter rear wheels. And it means if I run an even fatter wheel in the back, like if I find a 12 or something, they'll still be enough to cover that. So let me tape these on and then we can sort of look at mountings for the uh, mud flaps. All right, flare has been taped on. Um, sometime this year plan involves not having this exhaust pipe here. These are going to become a side pipe where it's going to get cut down and a tip's going to be put on that's somewhere quite slightly different. So I'm not really worrying about it aesthetically with regards to these. So these are long enough that at the ground they're still high enough up to fit in here. I think I want them about there probably and looking at things there is no place to mount this easily like I can share one mount hole for the flare right there but that's it there's no place because of how wide this is there's no place I could solidly attach it to the body all the way across which is not that big a deal because it's not actually great to have these mounted flat to the body. They just collect crud above them and become a source of rust. All right, I don't know how well this is gonna show. There we go. It looks like there's that lip. This, this right here is a lip that sticks down a little bit. And then if I go across here, obviously there's this where this meets. I think if I get a piece of aluminum, I can screw it to the top of this as like a strip of aluminum, put a 90 degree bend in it and put a bolt into that lip and then run it across and put another bolt into here and that'll hold that in place pretty nice and that'll keep it away from the body enough that it won't um, be a place for rot to really start. And um, it does, it's not going to need anything heavy duty because it just has to hold its own weight. So that can be a beefier bolt over there, but this can just be the same thin screw or bolt or maybe even a rivet, though I don't think I'm going to have rivets deep enough to do that. So I think that'll be easy. I just have to get some aluminum to do that with. So I think I'm going to go run that errand and then get back to this. All right, I am back. Got a piece of aluminum, bent an L on each end because I'm going to cut the two brackets out of it. So basically, the reason I'm back over here is that I need to set you up so you can see maybe this has got to go in against the piece it's going to get bolted to. I'm going to need to work. I'm going to cut it a little shy of the outside of the lip so that it doesn't potentially scrape it and crack or something. So now that I have that marked, this is going to get cut there and this is going to get mounted to it. Um, not in this, facing this way, but the other way. But basically, if that's the cut line, it's getting mounted to it just like that, just sticking out slightly from it, but there's holes in it already, so you can use those to drill and mount three of them. Basically, the two that are definitely going to be in here and the one that's definitely going to be over here. And then the last one's going to get marked and drilled to match there, so it'll be the other mounting point. Um, the bracket's going to go back here so that the rubber is up against this and not the metal, so I'm not potentially grinding that. This flare, I need to, he said, I need to drill holes for pop rivets. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna truck bed line the inside of it just as protection against rocks so that if the tire throws up a rock, it's just likely to crack this plastic.
there's the brackets all attached. The reason this one's like this is because this is the part that's going to be inside the um, fender flare. And I don't have a lot of clearance in there. And the last thing I wanted was a bolt head rubbing up against it that might cause it to crack or something. So this means that any part that's going to be touching the flare is going to all be rubber. And I don't mind having the bolt like that. Um, these two are on here with big washers so they won't tear out. And then this is obviously where it's going to mount to the um, wheel well. Though actually, putting this together, I realized if I'd made this longer and put like two bolts there, this would definitely be enough to support it on its own. It's only the fact that there's only one bolt here and it doesn't, it won't stay level. It'll be able to rotate. That'll probably be the only thing that keeps this from being able to just hold itself like that. But I don't mind. I'm going to have to put mounting hardware for the fender flare in. So if this shares one mount piece with that, it's not a big deal. So I think I'm going to go try and mount these up, even though the flares aren't attached. Just to, one, see what they look like, and two, see how well it holds with the one. So I know what kind of hardware I'm going to need to worry about for there. So this is as far as I've gotten. I've got this bolted in. I drilled the hole for over here. Unfortunately, the back of this folded up weird. Because I think I managed to perfectly hit where the two panels meet. Um, but I need to put a bolt in. But I was going to drill all the holes for the flare as well. And get started on that. But I realized the pop rivets I have are not deep enough. So I'm going to have to find some pop rivets. So I'm not going to start drilling holes until I know what size pop rivets I'm using. So... I'm going to pull the fender flare off and bolt this up. So it's bolted in, it's on, it's nice and solid, but it looks really, really dorky without the fender flare on sticking out, you know, two inches from the body. So this is going to come back off again, and I'm going to just not have them on until I get the flares ready to go in, which is going to involve puff rivets, which is going to involve probably tomorrow another trip to the hardware store i think i'm done for tonight but making good progress on this these definitely are gonna look cool as hell once it's all done thank you all very much for watching and i'll talk to you later bye